my name is Kurt Riley and I'm a member of the Enterprise Vault Backline Support Team. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Today I'm going to demonstrate the steps detailed in TechNote TECH35744 titled How to Move Enterprise Vault SQL Databases from One SQL Server to Another. Before moving the databases, on the EV server, we will review information in the administration console to determine the current location of the directory, fingerprint, and vault store databases, and we will stop all EV services to prepare for the database move. First, we will review information in the administration console to determine where the directory, fingerprint, and vault store databases are currently located. For the directory database, we'll right-click on Enterprise Vault and then click Properties. Next, we click Change Directory SQL Server, and we can see that the SQL Server name is dc-sql slash ev6. The slash ev6 denotes an instance on the SQL Server. We'll click Cancel twice to return to the main console. Next, for the fingerprint database, we'll right-click the Vault Store group and then click Properties. In this case, the Vault Store group is called VSG1. Next, we'll click the Database tab, and we can see the SQL Server is again dc-sql slash ev6. We'll click Cancel to return to the main console. And next, for the Vault Store database, We'll right click the Vault Store, then click Properties. In this case, the Vault Store is called VS1. Again, we'll click the Database tab, and we can see that the SQL Server is called DC SQL slash EV6. We can also tell that the database name is EV VS VS1 underscore 1. This will be useful when we get to SQL. We can confirm the exact name of the database. We'll go ahead and click Cancel, return to the main console, and close the console. Before moving to the SQL servers, we need to stop all the EV services. We can do this by stopping the Enterprise Vault admin service. We want to confirm that yes, we do want to stop all the dependent services, so we'll click Yes. And now that all the services are stopped, we're ready to move to the new SQL Server to confirm that it is properly configured to host the EV databases. On the new SQL Server, we will configure the proper permissions and protocols for Enterprise Vault to communicate with SQL. First, we'll ensure the VSA is a local admin. Next, we will ensure the VSA is assigned to the DB Creator role within SQL. And lastly, we will ensure that either TCP IP, named pipes, or both are enabled. Here on the new SQL Server, there are permission settings and protocol settings that need to be configured before moving Enterprise Vault databases to this server. First, we will confirm that the Vault Service account has the proper permissions on both the physical machine as well as within the SQL software itself. The Vault Service account should be a local administrator on the physical machine where SQL is installed, and to confirm this, we will ensure it is a member of the local administrator's group in computer management. We'll expand local users in groups, select groups, select administrators, right click, and select properties. Here we can see that VSA, which is this environment's Vault Service account, is already a local administrator. We'll click OK and close computer management. Within SQL Server Management Studio, the Vault Service account needs to be assigned to the DB Creator role. To confirm this, we'll expand security, expand logins, and select the Vault Service account. We'll right click, select properties, select server roles, and here we can see that DB Creator is already selected, so we'll click OK and close SQL Server Management Studio. Now that we are finished configuring permissions, we need to ensure that either TCP IP, named pipes, or both are enabled in SQL Server Configuration Manager. To do this, you expand the Network Configuration section and select protocols for the instance of 
SQL that will host the databases. In this case, it's protocols for EV6. And here we can see that both named pipes and TCP IP are enabled. For now, we are finished with the new SQL Server and need to connect to the old SQL Server. On the old SQL Server, we will confirm the location of the database and log files, back up the databases, detach the databases, and copy the databases and log files to the new SQL Server. Here on the old SQL Server, we need to confirm the location of the files for the databases and logs that need to be moved to the new SQL Server. The procedure will be the same for each of the Enterprise Vault databases, so I will only be demonstrating on one of the databases. In SQL Server Management Studio, right-click on the database that needs to be moved and select Properties. Then select Files. And here we can see by the file type which files are the database files and which files are the log files. We're going to scroll to the right and take note of the physical path and file names for the database and log files. In my case, my database is on the E drive in a folder called EV6 and the file is called vaultdev99.mdf. The log file is on the F drive in a folder again called EV6 and the file is called vaultlog99.mdf. We take note of these names and click OK. You'd repeat the process for any other Enterprise Vault databases that need to be moved. Before beginning the move process, it's highly recommended that the databases be backed up. To do so, right click on the database in question, hover over tasks, and then select backup. Configure the backup selections as desired, including the location where you'd like to store your backup and the name of the backup, and then click OK. Once you've received confirmation that the backup of the database is complete, you can click OK and repeat the process for any other databases that need to be moved. Once the backup is complete, we are ready to detach the databases from the SQL Server. To do so, right-click on the database that needs to be moved, hover over Tasks, and click Detach. You may want to choose Drop Connections in case there are any active connections that prevent the database from being detached. Since we previously stopped the Enterprise Vault admin service and all dependency services, there should not be any connections. We'll click OK. And you'll notice there was no confirmation, but the database is no longer listed. We'll repeat the process for the remaining databases that need to be moved. Once the database has been detached, we're ready to copy the databases to the new SQL Server. We're going to browse to the physical location of the database files here. We'll select all the database files that need to be moved. In my case, I'm going to move all my databases, so I will select all. You'll notice that I backed up to this folder as well, and I'm going to take that back up with me when I copy. So I'm going to right click and copy, and then I'm going to browse to the new SQL Server. This server is called SQL 6, and for simplicity, I have maintained the same drive structure. So I will go to the E dollar sign for my databases and I'll paste all the database files at once.
Once the database files have completed copying, we need to repeat the process for the log files. My logs are on the F drive, so I'll expand F and select the EV6 folder. Again, since I'm moving all of my databases, I need to move all of my logs. I will select all and copy. And then browse to the new SQL Server. Again, this is SQL 6, and my logs are on the F drive. We'll keep them consistent in the EV6 folder. Right click and paste. Once the log files have finished copying, we're ready to connect to the new SQL Server and attach the databases. On the new SQL Server, we will attach the databases, then update the fingerprint database. The fingerprint database is only available on versions 8.0 and higher, where sharing has been enabled. And next, we will update the monitoring database. Here on the new SQL Server, we're ready to attach the databases. To do so, we'll right-click Databases, select Attach, and click Add. We'll browse to and select the proper database file, and click OK. Because I matched the original drive paths, my logs are correctly listed with no error. If your logs are not in the same drive path on the new server as they were on the old server, you'll need to click the button with the three dots next to your log file name and browse to the location for your log file manually. We'll select the log file and click OK. Once the database and log files are added properly, click OK and the database is attached as we can see here. Repeat the process for all other EV databases that are being moved to this SQL Server. Our next step is to update the fingerprint database. This step is only required if the fingerprint database has already been configured. Fingerprint databases only exist on version 8.0 and later, where sharing has been enabled. In SQL Server Management Studio, we're going to open a SQL script from TechNote TECH64655. This TechNote can be found in the related article section of the original TechNote for moving Enterprise Vault databases from one SQL Server to another. I'll click on File, Open, File, and select the SQL query. Click Open, and then scroll down to the Select statement. Here we have three entries that need to be modified. The first is VSG underscore name. This is the name of the Vault Store group as listed in the Enterprise Vault console. My Vault Store group is called VSG1. The next entry is for the FPC DB underscore name, and this is the name of your Vault Store group database. This can be found underneath databases and begins with EVVSG, as seen here. I will copy this and paste here. The last section that needs to be modified is the new underscore SQL underscore server underscore name. This is the name of the new SQL server, which in my case is SQL 6 slash EV6. And now we're ready to execute. I'll click the execute button, and we see that one row was successfully updated. We're finished with this query, so I'll close it, and there's no need to save. Our next step is to update the monitoring database. In SQL Server Management Studio, I'll open a new query and copy from the original tech note in the section labeled as updating the monitoring database and paste. The section that needs to be modified here is called new underscore SQL underscore server. This is the name of the SQL Server and again that's SQL 6 slash EV6 and we want to make sure we have the leading and trailing single quotes. I'll click Execute, and we see that one row is affected. At this point, we're done with the SQL Server, so I will close SQL Server Management Studio, and again, no need to save. On the Enterprise Vault server, we will edit the registry to update the directory database server. We'll start the directory service. We'll update the Vault Store database server through the Administration Console. We'll start the remaining Enterprise Vault services. We'll update the Audit database. 
This is only required if auditing has been enabled. And lastly, it is critical to test archiving, restoring, and searching to ensure the database moves were successful. Our next step is to update the directory database. To do so, we're going to open RegEdit. So I'll click Start, Run, and RegEdit OK. Next we need to browse to the path, which is HK Local Machine, Software, KVS, Enterprise Vault, Directory, Directory Service. Here we can see the SQL Server name. We double click and modify this to the new SQL Server name. The new SQL Server is SQL 6 slash EV6, so we'll tell this OK and close RegEdit. At this point, we're ready to start the directory service. When we start the directory service, the admin service will automatically start with it. Our next step is to update the Vault Store database. We'll do this in the console. So I'll click Start and then Administration Console. I'll right click on the VS1, go to Properties, select Database tab, and change the SQL Server name. I'll click OK and now we are OK to start the remaining EV services. Our last step is to update the audit database. No EV services need to be stopped for this step. To update the EV audit database, we need to update the EV audit system DSN. On a 32-bit system, we would open data sources ODBC from the administrative tools panel. Because this is a 64-bit system, we'll need to open it from C Windows System32 ODBC AD32.exe. So we'll click start, then run, and we will type in the path. C colon backslash Windows. We can see that I've run this before, so I'll have to select it from the list and hit enter. We'll select System DSN, select EV Audit, click Configure. The section labeled Which SQL Server do you want to connect to needs to be modified to the new SQL Server name. Then click Next, Next, Next finish. Test data source and we see that it tests successfully. We click OK, click OK, click OK. At this point we are finished with moving our SQL databases and we should test to assure that everything is still functioning as expected. This should include archiving, restoring, and searching. For detailed information on the topics covered in this lesson, please refer to the resources listed here.